Good day friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to start by reading this article. It was in December, but I'm reading this to just get this started because I want to take you on a little journey and hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll get the point what I'm making here. As you know, in my videos, I talk about the Antichrist, Bible prophecy, the end of days, and tying in with all of this is Islam and its own end times paradigm, which lines up coincidentally with what the Bible says. Now, as well as us being prepared and staying vigilant, there's still many in the church who are utterly ignorant of this threat. So it is my hope and my ambition today to wake you up again. I'm going to start by reading this article because this, there's a reason to it. Young US Muslims are rising up against Israel in unlikely places. Just that title alone sums up what we're seeing globally. Well, I shouldn't say globally. I'd say Islamic countries and the West. Primarily, it's a concern for those of us who live in the West, taking a good look around as to what is the message that they are preaching. This isn't about land, no. This is all rooted in a religious hatred for the Jews and for the land. In a nutshell, it's about eradicating the Jews and replacing the land of Israel and Jerusalem as the capital city for the Islamic United Nations, also known as the Caliphate. Young US Muslims are rising up against Israel in unlikely places. Let's read on. As she watched the conflict in Israel and Gaza unfold this fall, 17-year-old finally had enough. She decided to organise a protest in support of the Palestinian cause in a very unlikely place, a courthouse in Huntsville, Alabama. Initially, Zeta, a second-generation Palestinian-American, was terrified that no one would show up. Zeta knew it was a conservative town better known for divisive debates over Confederate monuments than for protests against a war overseas. But as the rally began, dozens of fellow Muslims, including women, wearing headscarves, trickled into the town square in late October, carrying signs decrying Israel's invasion of the Gaza Strip. Local media showed up as Zeta Nish had succeeded in connecting her city and its growing Muslim population to conflict halfway around the world. It's because it's centred in a religious hatred. There's a passion, there's a fire among the Muslim population, especially the younger generation and the Muslim women who want to stand up and fill in the crowds. This is a hatred. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what drives them. People, <clears throat> people now know, excuse me, there is a Palestinian voice in this city. A student at the University of Alabama at Huntsville. Everyone has a voice and can say whatever feels right and fight back using our voice. This isn't just about your right to protest, your, your right to freedom of speech. This is more sinister and it ties in with what I've been saying on my channel about the rise of a antichrist system coming out from the Islamic world which will inevitably have an impact on the West because their people, the followers of the false prophet of Islam, are in the West and this also ties in with the lax immigration policies that we have in the US. I just want to have a sip of tea. Across the nation from the deep south to Appalachia and relatively rural communities in the Midwest, I've never said that word before, <laughs> protest in support of the plight of Palestinians rather than shock 
and horror and condemnation of Hamas and the atrocities that they committed against innocent civilians in Israel. Rather than that, protests in support of the plight of Palestinians are springing up, showcasing the continued spread of the US Muslim population into the country's heartland. Children of refugees from Muslim nations organized many of the demonstrations evidence of a political awakening among a new generation of young americans who are helping to shape u.s public opinion in support of a ceasefire in the middle east i could go on and read some more it's very interesting but i want to move on if you google protesters regarding the palestinian protesters outside the white house lately i mean there's a lot of images a lot of photography taken <clears throat> loads of women you see they're gloating like i said this is a time for celebration for the muslim world the global muslim community are celebrating because they see what Hamas did as a sign of victory. It gives them hope because they don't want a two-state solution. They want to eradicate Jews from the land. Symbol. Why? For the cause of Allah. Don't be deceived, friends. This is not political. So they're bowing down to a, a foreign god, a pagan deity, Baal worship, globally. And they're doing it in large numbers. As though this is a military gathering. And this is telling me that they are telling us they're here to stay. They're not here to assimilate. The Muslim immigration in the West was not to assimilate. Now there are those who have fled persecution war-torn countries especially muslim on muslim warfare in their own countries and they fled seeking asylum a refuge in the west and many of those muslims just want to get along just want to earn a living and what have you you know the good stuff but those people are very far and few in between What's happening now that those ones that we thought were moderates are now joining these crowds? And not only that, they're promoting a religious message which is based in what I call, what I like to label as sophistry. You may have remembered I mentioned this before. Sophistry explains Islamic preaching. Why am I talking about Islamic preaching? Because that is what they're doing. They are evangelizing the West whilst protesting ceasefire now. Sophistry. You need to get familiar with this term because once you understand it, the penny drops. Sophistry definition. The use of clever but false arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving. For example, I'm going to play this video clip. It's three minutes. Suddenly, Muslims <clears throat> are in these protests. There are videos of it. You can see them on Twitter. In the middle of their anti-Israeli protests, they're doing their dawa. They're inviting Western audiences to embrace Islam in the midst of their anti-Israel protests. Hmm. What does that got to do with it? They're telling you. Plain sight. For example, I'm going to play this Islamic video. It's three minutes and just please Bear with me, I've got a lot to get through. In fact, I've had to organise to redo another section continuation on this video message. 
because I don't want to be here more than an hour. Listen to this video. This is how they are presenting Islam to your naive Western, haven't got a clue about Islam, mind. Wake up. Don't be deceived. Jesus, or Isa alayhi salam, is an important figure appearing in both the Bible and the Quran. But do both Muslims and Christians have the same belief regarding his position and role? There are some similarities between them when it comes to the life of Jesus, such as the belief that he was born to the Virgin Mary or Lady Maryam. As the Quran says, she said, how can I have a boy while no man has touched me and I have not been unchaste? He said, thus it will be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it is a matter already decreed. Secondly, Jesus was given the ability to perform certain miracles, such as resurrecting the dead. They're warming you up to establish common ground, you understand? So the introduction is designed in a manner to establish that we have a lot in common. The Christians and the Muslims have Jesus in common. So they're establishing that ground, right? Continue giving sight to the blind and curing the severely paralyzed. Despite these similarities, there are some points of differences as well. We Christians go. believe Jesus is an incarnate or son of God who was crucified in this world as a sacrifice and atonement for the sins of mankind. I'm sharing this also to get you familiar with how to respond should you be one of those people who are innocently just minding your own business and you are suddenly confronted with one of these Dawah Gandhists, these Muslim preachers who are now preaching Islam in the midst of their anti-Israel protests, or it could be your neighbour next door. Are you familiar with your responses? Do you know your scriptures? Do you understand that this is a deception and it's a great deception because many people are falling for it. Many. Muslims, on the other hand, believe Jesus was one of the greatest prophets to have been sent by Allah for the guidance of humankind. And believing in him as a prophet <clears throat> is a requirement in Islam. He was sent with a divinely revealed book called the Injil, a gospel that was later corrupted and altered. Allah says in the Quran, Then we made our messengers follow them one after the other. Then we sent after them Isa, the son of Maryam, and gave him the Injil and placed compassion and mercy in the hearts of his followers. In another verse of the Quran, Allah says, Jesus came to his people as a prophet, confirming the teachings of the previous divinely revealed book and the teachings of Prophet Moses. Jesus, son of Mary said, Children of Israel, I am sent to you by God, confirming the Torah that came before me. One of the most important differences Islam has with Christianity is on the crucifixion of Jesus. One of the important differences that Islam has with Christians is on the crucifixion of Jesus. Do you understand? This is deception. This is sophistry okay so they're promoting these videos their messages are becoming more prominent in these circles on youtube as well preying on the minds of those seemingly christians who don't know their their faith they don't know the word of god they don't actually understand what they believe about jesus and praying on their minds to deceive them. Be warned. I've been warning you about these days that are coming. They're here now. So buckle up, friends. According to the Muslims, Jesus was never truly killed. Rather, it was made to appear for the people that it was Jesus. But in reality, it was someone else. Allah says in the Quran, And for their saying, Surely we killed the Messiah, Isa, son of Maryam, the messenger of Allah. And in no way did they kill him, and in no way did they crucify him, but a resemblance of him was presented to them. This also means Muslims believe Jesus is alive and never died, 
rather his body was raised into the heavens by Allah. He will return near the end of times. Allah so you following so far? They say Jesus is alive. We believe he's alive, but he was raised up to Allah. And what they missed out in this short clip is that Islamic, be Islamic belief says that there was another person in place of Jesus on the cross. So Allah had spared Jesus Christ from dying on the as a crucifixion <clears throat> death and just raised him without dying. Therefore, they believe Jesus is returning and he's going to die when he returns on earth as a mere human being. But watch the ending. Let me take it back a little. How quickly... This is the Islamic narrative in a capsule. This is exactly what they believe. And this is why those who don't understand who Jesus is are going to accept the deception, are going to take the bait of Satan and going to be a part of a falling away. This could be the great falling away. His body Pay was attention. raised into the heavens by Allah. He will return near the end of times along with the Mahdi, the 12th Imam from the Ahlul Bayt. The Mahdi. You see? So, like you and me, we've got our end times scenario. We talk about Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. These wonderful placards that we see. God bless those people. But they don't talk about this. The Antichrist and the false prophet who are also coming. We've got to give the full gospel message. The life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension of Christ Jesus and his return. Let's give people the full message of the gospel because there's a vacuum being created and Christians have done it because they don't want to talk about the end times they don't want to talk about the return of Jesus I have no idea as to why because that's the most glorious message the fact that our risen king is returning should be a priority but because we don't talk about it there's a vacuum created and these serpents are sneaking in to steal the flock. But you know, I have encouragement because the Lord knows those who are his and those who are going to deny him. So at the ending of this Islamic dawah, proclaiming Islam as the answer and Jesus is a Muslim kind of message, they summarise by introducing you to these two figures, the Mahdi, end times character, who's going to unite the Islamic world to the Ummah. He's more of a military, political figure. And their version of Jesus. And they didn't get his name right. They call him Isa, who's coming as the prophet to seal the deal. Your Antichrist and your false prophet. I'm going to take it back a notch. In the heavens by Allah. He will return near the end of times, along with the Mahdi, the 12th Imam from the Ahlul Bayt, and assist the Imam in establishing justice and peace in the world, just as it would have been filled with tyranny and injustice. Self-history, right. That's what you were witnessing, do you understand? But because there are people who are ignorant, and don't understand they've got questions that haven't been answered by the church by the pastor because the pastor doesn't want to offend muslims so he'd rather not talk about it or have an opinion the younger generation are going online vulnerable spiritually and they're being preyed upon your children your teenagers but i've got another video clip <laughs> A very good one, okay? I mentioned this some time ago. I wonder if I'll have the permission to share the whole movie on my channel. I'd, I'd like to do that. But I had this on DVD many years ago. When I first came to faith in the Lord Jesus, there's a series of videos. The compilation of videos, which are testimonies, reenacted, dramatised in short videos movies and the series is called more than dreams and there's several short 
testimonials, reenactments of these former Muslims who came to faith in Jesus. And here's one particular guy, the story of Khalil. The good news is, I gave you the bad news what's happening. The good news is many Muslims are coming to faith in Jesus. And not your nominal Muslims. We're talking about hardcore extremists. Just watch their videos, their testimonials on YouTube, you guys. It's so encouraging. So this video is showing the story, the real life, true story of this person called Khalil. He was a part of a terrorist group in, uh, I think it was Lebanon or Syria. Could be Hezbollah. They don't say in here. But I want to share with you one particular clip. Have you seen this? Maybe I should show you from... Okay. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this bit and then I'm going to move it, skip along a little bit. Pray for the Muslims, friends. It's got subtitles because it's in Arabic. <laughs> من يقاتل في سبيل الله فيقتل أو يغلب فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما أخوك في الجنة يا مصطفى لازم تشد حيلك وتعزي نفسك بالفكرة دي ولا تقول لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم يا أمير وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته كيف حال التدريب اليوم يا إخوة على أحسن ما يرام يا أمير بارك الله فيكم استريحوا So let me just tell you what's going on So the Emir has a group of young men who are terrorists They're doing their jihad And he gives an idea to one of them He picks one of them and he says I give you a task it would be your duty to produce a written book condemning the evangelical Christians who come into the Middle East and they evangelize Muslims. I want you to write a book exposing the fallacies of the Bible and, you know, to counterattack. That's what he's, he sets this guy up to do. So while this guy, Khalil takes up the mission something happens doesn't it كان بيزورنا بشكل منتظم علشان يتفحص استعدادنا وفي ليله قررنا so he's going to start he's going to start to study the bible in order to expose it and this happens a lot with muslims this is very common أخيرا قررت إن أنا أتبع تعليمات الأمير كان لازم أطاوع وأبتدي أشتغل في المهمة اللي هو كلفني بيها لكن بصراحة ما كنتش عارف أبتدي منين بالضبط في قرايتي للتوراة لقيت شوية حاجات فيها تناقض واضح بينها لكني قلت دي مش هتساعدني قوي لأن القرآن كمان في اختلافات كتير زي كده وإذا قلنا إن الحاجات دي بتضعف من دقة الكتاب المقدس ومن صحته هنكون بكده بنحكم على القرآن بنفس الطريقة علشان كده بديت أدور على أخطاء تانية لكني ملقتش ولا واحدة قريت الكتاب المقدس كله لكني ما لقيتش اللي كنت بتمنى الاقيه
لقد أحضرت لك معي ما تحتاجه يا خليل خذ إظهار الحق هذا الكتاب يحتوي على قائمة بس So he tells the Emir, I didn't find what I was looking for. And this happens a lot with Muslims. So while the Muslims are preaching Jesus is a Muslim, there are those Muslims who are wondering and questioning if that's true. So they go and find out themselves or they get a vision or a dream and they see Jesus. And this is what happens to this guy. It's a wonderful, wonderful testimony. I'm going to share with you the scene where he tells his Amir that he couldn't find what he was looking for in the Bible and watch what happens. الحمد لله أخيرا بدأ بالكتابة Did you see the, the title? What he ended up doing was questioning is the Quran God's word? Which is not what the Emir tasked him to do. Wonderful. ايه اللي جرى لك يا خليل؟ ايه اللي انت كاتبه ده؟ انت بتقول ان القرآن مش كلام الله؟ ان ما كنتش مصدقني اقرا بنفسك الانجيل. انت مجنون مبسوط باللي انا اشتغلته ولا لا؟ انا قلت لك مليون مره شوف حد تاني يقول بالمهمه دي، لكن كل مره ترد عليا وتقول لي ربنا اختارنا انا. انت المفروض تلوم نفسك مش تلومنا انا. احنا دفعنا لك فلوس كتير. عشان تكشف اكاذيب النصارى القفره لا 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 انت قلت لي اعمل ابحاث بنفسي وده اللي انا عملته وكتابهم هو الحق ومش بس كده القران نفسه بيقول ان عيسى المسيح هو الله The movie is so wonderful, it's so moving, and all of them are in the series, More Than Dreams, okay? I will link it under the description after I'm done. So, I wanted to show you that because when I'm presenting... Oh, you know, the Antichrist is Islamic, the beast is here, the people are populating, immigration's getting out of control. It can sound really dismal and it's like, oh my goodness, so there's no hope. Of course there is hope. You see, the darker it gets, friends, the brighter the lights of the saints becomes to shine. 
So in the midst of darkness, there is hope and there are many Muslims who are discovering by God's grace and his mercy who Jesus is. And as you know, there are testimonies of people like these men here. There's, there's accounts of some of them who when they go to Saudi Arabia to do the Hajj or the Ummah, the Umrah, their pilgrim pilgrimage, they end up seeing Jesus there. So Jesus is well and able to reveal himself to whoever, however he wants. And it is happening. But going back to this. Muslim immigration in the West, in Europe, in the US, it's not by coincidence. I read these comments on social media by people who are really frustrated and they keep saying, why are they here if they don't like it here? Why don't they go back where they came from? You see, it's a silly, it's a silly comment. The reason why they're here is to spread Islam. They come here to make the mark, build their mosques, establish their community centres, introduce halal meat and they Arabize the culture. Because Islam is an Arabic system. All these Muslims from all walks of life, from different countries, European Muslims, Turkish Muslims, Persian Muslims, African Muslims, they all pray in the Arabic. It's an Arabized system. You've got to adopt the Arabic, right? They lose their identity, which is what Islam is. I brought this up because I wanted to remind you to watch this playlist. The channel is called Political Islam. Professor Bill Warner, or Dr. Bill Warner, he has a playlist on jihad. Make sure you watch this playlist. Very concise, small little clips to educate you, okay? And in the midst of these protests, online, I'm talking about the presence of Muslims protesters who are Muslim. I'm not talking about the Marxist idiots, the leftists, dangerous idiots i would say i'm not talking about them i'm talking about the islamic muslims who are protesting anti-israel messages everywhere they begin introducing the audience to jesus that he's a muslim and muslims are the true followers of jesus christ and somebody with a brain has got to say what on earth has that got to do with the political struggle in israel and palestine what's it got to do with it they're telling you it's got everything to do with it. Because in Islam, like you heard yourself, they believe Jesus is coming back. I hate to say Jesus because they're talking about Islamic, Isa, not the risen Lord, Holy One of Israel, Jesus Christ. The fake wannabe, the weak imitation of Jesus is Isa. This is why... They're up in arms over this real estate. And the word of God told us about it. I've got several scriptures we're going to go into. I've got the book of Revelation and two books from the prophets. Are you beginning to see the picture? Because we've got to zoom out after we zoom in. We've got to zoom out, back up. Right. Okay. Hmm. David Pawson. Do you recall? My British audience would know him. David Paulson wrote a book many years ago, a couple of decades ago actually. And it was titled something on the lines of The Challenge of Islam to the Church. And it was sort of like the church needs to prepare and brace itself for the challenge that Islam is presenting to the church. He foresaw it. He foresaw what was coming in England. And I hate to say it, I have said this before. The UK is over. They introduce you to these two guys, Mahdi and Isa. 
And the wording in the red is their enemy. And their enemy happens to be a Jew. Hmm. A Jewish leader who's going to have Jewish followers. And he, Dajjal, is the opponent of the Mahdi and Isa, who they're going to join forces to defeat. This is the Islamic narrative, okay? This is why, like I said, and like I've showed you before, this is why we find artwork like this, designed by Muslims, showing their military strength when the Mahdi, the military political figure, comes, and the Isa, the prophetic Jesus kind of person shows up. Your Antichrist and the false prophet. The book of Revelation in chapter 13 told us there are two beasts. One that rises up out of the sea and one that rises up out of the earth. We've got two systems joining together but they're one system. Another very important point to remind you that these protesters, these extremist bunch, are worked up because they know what their scriptures teach them about the Jews. So we can say this is about Palestine all we like, but you don't fool me one bit. <laughs> Narrated in the Sahih Bukhari, It's all there on the screen. If you've got eyes to see, you can even note it down if you want. Allah's Apostle said, The hour, this is about the last days, okay? The hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews. So Allah has prescribed an, an eternal jihad with the Muslims and the Jews until the very end of time. In fact, the end will not culminate until this happens. And the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding, they're going to be sought after, hunted down. That according to Islamic belief, this is why they boast and gloat about what Hamas did. Do you understand? They're thinking their prophecies are almost coming to pass. We're just waiting for the Mahdi and Isa. This is why Mahdi and Isa are in their messages. The stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, Oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, so kill him. This isn't about Jews. We love Jews. We lived peacefully with them, didn't you know, during the golden age of Islam and the Khilafah? We lived at peace with Christians and Jews. Yeah, after you subdued them, subjugated them, humiliated them, and charged them a levy to protect their life, then you lived at peace with them. I'm showing you the two most prominent Islamic scriptures that is fueling this zealous bunch to destroy Israel. And it's not going to happen. You know why? Because the Bible said so. This is from the Quran now. What I shared with you previously was from the, um, the Hadith. This is from the Quran. Quran.com, Surah chapter 9, verse 29. They've got it there in the Arabic, but we're going to read it in the English, of course. They've got it in different translations, all saying the same thing. Fight against those. I mean, this is the scripture, the Islamic text that all these Islamists use. The Hamases, the Hezbollahs, all of them, Islamic Jihad. Taliban, all of them. 
Boko Haram, all of them, no matter what Muslim you are, be it African, Persian, Arab, you all hate Jews. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day. It was important for Satan, who inspired Islam, to make this about the last day. Do you understand what I'm getting at, friends? Because Jesus is coming in the last days. So the serpent, cunning as he is, it was important for him to incorporate this end of time scenario in the Islamic scriptures because he needs A, an army, two, those in the army are willing to die and to kill for him, three, those who are willing to invade and take over Jerusalem because the serpent knows, the dragon knows what his destiny is and he knows the king of kings is coming to rule, to reign, to restore, to redeem Israel in the land, yes, in the land, for a thousand years, after which will come the heavenly Jerusalem. So the dragon inspired this whole thing. You see how cunning he is. Why do you think Jesus so many times warned us? Don't be deceived. Do not let anyone fool you. Fight against those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day. And do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful. And who do not adopt the religion of truth, i.e. Islam, from those who were given the scripture. We're talking about us, right? Pinpointing you and me, the Jew and the Christian. Fight until they give the jizya, the tax system. Fight, kill as many as you can. Until those who remain, who are so terrified, they end up submitting. Fight until this happens. Willingly, while they are humbled. Didn't you know? Like my sister and my brother would tell me. I'm sure they're listening because they don't miss a beat, do they? Didn't you know that Muslims and Christians and Jews all lived at peace? Didn't you know that? The Jews have been a traumatised, a persecuted nation of people who have lived through trauma after trauma after trauma. So bear with them. Bear with them, friends. <clears throat> They're not perfect, nor are you. I wasn't perfect when the Lord revealed who he was to me. And I'm still not perfect. So don't expect others to be perfect because you're not. A people who have lived through trauma, horrendous trauma, like the Armenians, are locked in a trauma-bonded situation, also known as Stockholm Syndrome. I've said this so many times. I don't know if you're paying attention. I don't know if you look these things up later to research it some more. They're bonded with their abuser. They've been trained, conditioned to submit. We just want to get along. We'll do what it takes. But you know what? Now, the majority of people in Israel are saying, we tried everything. We can't do this anymore. There can't be a two-state solution with these monsters. Another translation, which is really good because it really breaks it down some more. Fight those people off the book. Specific. Jews and the Christians are the people of the book. What's the book? The Holy Bible is the book. And the word of God told us in Revelation chapter 12, the dragon goes after the woman, Israel, and her offspring, who are those who keep the commandments of Jesus and have the testimony of Jesus. So the serpent concocted it. Fight those people of the book who do not believe in Allah or in the last day 
and do not take as an unlawful what Allah and his messenger have declared as unlawful and do not profess the faith of truth fight them until they pay jizya with their own hands while they are subdued does it make sense now so how will the false prophet and the antichrist deceive the world do you like ask yourself how do you think it's going to happen overnight or is it happening already and the people are ready to receive them these people are ready to receive them they're preparing and they're equipping themselves to welcome with open arms Isa and the Mahdi and they want you to welcome them as well otherwise it will be what I just told you fight the people of the book don't believe in Allah just fight them and whoever remains, whoever wants to submit, subdue them. But in the end time scenario, in Islam, interestingly enough, I haven't got them up right now. According to Islam, where's that image? According to Islam, when Isa shows up, he's the one who's going to abolish the tax system. Never ever in Islamic history has that ever been the case. They've always implemented this humiliating tax system applied to just the Jews and the Christians, the people of the book. But when he comes in the last days, he's going to abolish that system. Because the consensus is that by the time these two show up, the whole world is going to be Muslim. Nobody gonna have a choice. Otherwise it's gonna be off with your head. Why do you think they all got swords? This is what they're projecting. This is the offensive against Christ. These two. Which brings me to this point. Is it any wonder now why the Lord is gonna send his two? The two prophets, the two witnesses. I know you've seen my playlist, my videos I've done on this subject. The two witnesses that are coming. It's such an interesting subject. Very interesting, very intriguing. I proposed that these could be two people groups that rise up who are witnesses of Jesus and they testify. I don't want to be so adamant on this. I want to I want to be open to the Holy Spirit wherever he leads. Those videos are very old, they're very good. A loads of scriptures in them to support that thesis, but I think it's it's interesting that the Lord God sends his two witnesses to counter <laughs> these two. The two witnesses are coming, you guys. Don't forget, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And what do they do? Let us go and find out. In the book of Revelation. Because at the time of the beast who reigns for 42 months, three and a half years, the two witnesses also have their mission for three and a half years in the book of revelation chapter 11 let us read then i was given a reed like a measuring rod and the angel stood say rise and measure the temple of god the altar and those who worship there i love how specific the lord is but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it has been given to the gentiles And they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. This is showing us that they're going to increase in their anger, their hostility, their violence. Hamas and co, especially with the support of Turkey. 
and Hezbollah, so you got Turkey and Iran, they're going to invade the land, you guys. The Hamas terrorists and the Palestinian terrorists who joined the Hamas terrorists, the civilians, they said their, their ambition was to go into Jerusalem. That's what they wanted to do on that day, October the 7th. It wasn't just about those kibbutz, it was that they wanted to go in further. This is their end goal, this is what they want, right? The bullseye. And they would tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Just like John the Baptist was sent forth to prepare the people for the Lamb of God. Preaching repentance and baptism in water in immersion. It was all about repentance. Do the work of repentance. Prove that you repented and then get baptized. Just in this manner. God is sending his two witnesses this time. In the kind of same style. Clothed in sackcloth. Which is representative of repentance. They're going to preach a fiery preaching sermons you guys. The two witnesses are not going to be appeasing anyone they're not going to be seeker friendly church preaching no they're going to be preaching hard and heavy hallelujah these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the god of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them and we know they're going to be these muslims who are going to want to kill them right if anyone wants to harm them fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies this is real fire. It's not allegory. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. Just so you know, God means what he says here. These have power to shut heaven. Just like in the days of old, in the days of the Exodus. Moses. It's just. You see the parallels of the exodus and what happened here. What is going to happen here. Same scenario. Because at the time of the first exodus, the Lord gathered his people, delivered them. And he's going to do it again. But just like in the first time, only a remnant made it through. It's going to be the same thing. Only a remnant, you guys, are going to make it in Israel, in Jerusalem. Two witnesses, just like Moses and Aaron. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood. And to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Literally, the two witnesses are going to be God's response to these guys. Do you see what's coming now? There are videos that people have done about the two witnesses, but they're forgetting to connect the dot to say who they're in response to. But they do it for a season. When they finish their testimony, their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies, but it's not over yet. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Just before people get overexcited about, see, Jerusalem's a harlot. The place where Jesus, our Lord, was crucified was outside the city walls of Jerusalem. Research it. That's where he was crucified, outside Jerusalem. So this place outside of Jerusalem, the city wars, is going to become Sodom and Egypt. This is utterly disgusting, loathing people that are going to kill the two witnesses. 
Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And we've seen how the Islamists, the terrorists, like to desecrate bodies. We've just seen it recently, haven't we? They, they're so proud of their satanic evil that they record it and they parade it on social media. And those who support these vile acts of evil justify it by saying, by any means necessary, decolonization is an ugly thing. Yeah, but we will do it. This is how bad darkness is. It just takes over people. They can no longer think rationally and they can no longer feel humanly. They've lost their human empathy and they've lost their they've lost their marbles. Taken over by darkness, that's what happens, right? And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them. Just like we see the protesters do now. They rejoiced over the fact that these thugs, these monsters, these imbeciles, I can't even think of a word that better describes them. I won't say animal, because animals are better than Hamas and the Islamists. <clears throat> they celebrated what Hamas did to the civilians in Israel. So we know who are those who are going to celebrate the killing of the two witnesses. They will rejoice over them, making merry, and send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Hallelujah. These guys are going to torment them, friends. Is, do I have time to read this now? I've got more images of the two witnesses. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? These two witnesses, you guys, are coming to torment the beast and the false prophet. <laughs> Take that, Satan. Take that. I'm going to move on. Let me just show you quickly then. Okay, Mr. Middle East Forum. When I say the text and I read to you those scriptures, Islamic verses, about subdue them so they pay the jizya, this is what they mean, right? Dimi. It's a, it's a word meaning the people of the book. That's the appropriate word for it or the people of the covenant. Dimitude is an Islamic phenomenon. <clears throat> it describes the condition of submission. What's Islam? To submit. Not all this other nonsense that these Dawah Gandhis are preaching. Muslim, to be a Muslim means to believe in one God. Nonsense. What an idiot. Muslim simply means the one who submitted. It describes the condition of submission to Islamic dominance, yet without conversion to the Islamic faith. So you can keep your faith, but you've got to be humiliated while you do it. This is a pleasure they get out of humiliating the Christians and the Jews. You see? Malignant narcissism, right? You know what I'm saying? Under classical theological formulations developed in the first centuries of Islam, the region where Islam rules is known as Darul Islam, House of Islam, from the very beginning, the Darul Islam included many non-Muslims. Of course, the region was Jewish and Christian until Islam showed up. Indeed, they were normally in the majority after initial conquest. Based on the example of Muhammad's dealings with the conquered Jewish farmers, they know, Muslims know, what Muhammad was like with the Jews. This is why they do the same thing. Muhammad's dealings with the conquered Jewish farmers of Kaybar, Fadak, Taima and Wadi al -Kuro. The institution of the Dhimma Pact was developed in Islamic law to define the legal status of those who refused to convert to Islam. It was so peaceful. It was unbelievably peaceful. Coexisted together. They were equal citizens. Everything was just so wonderful. Utopia that Islam brought to the world 
Why couldn't it be just like that? Why did the Jews have to have their own Jewish state? Why couldn't they have just been satisfied by being persecuted around the world? They didn't need to have their own state, did they? Worse still is that they had the audacity to go back to the land where the king of David's throne was. I mean, come on, times have changed. People move on. Muslims are here now and you, Jew, are the alien in the land. The dimma was granted by Muslim conquerors as a concession to the vanquished, an institutional legal framework which promised a measure of religious freedom. It was a measure after that humiliation and determined the social and economic place of non-Muslims in the Islamic State. If you want to live, be amongst us. They didn't give him a choice much anyway. Off with your head otherwise. Then we will give you office. You love duties to do will give you a degree of this sense of false respect but really you're humiliated and we know you're humiliated in return the people of the pact known as dhimmis were required to pay tribute in perpetuity to the muslim community and to adopt a position of humble servitude to it this is the enlightenment that the muslims want to spread I had a video here, but instead I'll just, <clears throat> I'll just watch it in your own time. Awesome guy, James Lindsay, support for Hamas across Europe and America should not be normalised in our society. I can link it if you want, very good video. Shall I play a little bit of it? All right, let's just do it. I was looking out and on the cell phone, you've got to come down here, they've got out the horses <laughs> for the the mounted police, but then it turned, you know, quite more vigorous as the day went on. And I understand it got a little crazy after dark, but no, it seemed, uh, I don't despair of these things necessarily, but it was a lot larger than I expected. He's talking about what the protests in London. sort of thing throughout Western capitals now. Is this just what we have to get used to, where actually people, in some cases, are glorifying the October 7 massacre that occurred in Israel? So, yes, it is what I expect in capitals now, and no, it is not something we should get used to. We should be using it as a wake-up call that something has gone very bad, badly wrong in our, our civilization. And then we need to start finding out, understanding what it is and addressing it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But um, it's almost like the West, especially the US, has got that button called self-demolition and they've just activated it. You know what I'm saying? The Times of Israel reported um, a couple of days ago and now you can understand why. After October 7th, even to raise the two-state solution is obscene. Let's just repeat or refresh our minds. October the 7th, Palestinian terrorists and Gaza residents, don't forget, it was a lot of them, a lot of them. So if those civilians would do that there, what do you think they're going to do in the West? Because now they're emboldened, they're confident, they're so arrogant now that I guarantee you what happened there could very well happen here. I don't say that lightly. I do not say that lightly. Do you understand the dilemma that we're in now as a society? But as the people of God, the days that we are living in ought to be glorious for us. Because the worse, the worser the persecution, and it has been for the church, in Africa, in Asia, in China, everywhere in the Middle East, the saints have been sought after, preyed upon, targeted, ethnically cleansed, genocided against. It's just we in the West haven't had an ounce of that to experience, but it's coming. Is coming by these people who we opened arms to. We welcomed them in our nations, thinking that they'll be civil, they'll be grateful, they'll assimilate, they'll contribute to society. And instead, they turned around and they stabbed you in the back. These are the people who the Lord is going to use to wake up his church. 
What does God do to Israel when he chastises them, rebukes them, to prepare them? Same thing's going to happen to the church. You know, I hope you do, that the Lord uses the fires of tribulation, persecution, to purify the bride. It looks like this is how it's going to go down for us in the West. Looks like it, doesn't it? Amongst other things. The residents massacred way more than this many people. Over 1,000 Israeli citizens gang raped not only Israeli citizens, there were foreigners there too who were working in Israel. Gang raped countless women and a lot of these testimonials and eyewitnesses saying a lot of that was by the residents. Burned babies alive. Remember the Lara Logan video I shared with you in my last video? Don't forget. Please don't forget these things that happened. Burned babies alive in front of their parents and abducted 240 hostages into the tunnels of Gaza. Remarkably, in the aftermath of the worst slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust, and look who did it. Islam. Nazi fascist Islam. The worst slaughter of Jewish people since the Holocaust. Who gets that trophy? Islam. And they are proud about it. They've literally said that. We are proud. We're happy. We're pleased. Malignant knocks. Orcs. There is renewed talk of a two-state solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. In other words, rewarding Palestinians for their latest round of terrorism, because appeasement works, following a century of horrific acts of terror with a country of their own, it is obscene. But they want this place. Let me refresh it. Is that the most recent report? Three hours ago now. Security forces post warnings in East Jerusalem, the bit that they want, but they don't want just that, they want all of it, against violence on Temple Mount during Ramadan. Oh, here we go again. Why is it that this religion of peace, every year during their fasting season, the police in Israel have to start reorganising and taking security measures? There's something about this religion of peace that's just not peaceful. <laughs> the irony. Oh my goodness. Now Ramadan is coming. And so East Jerusalem is under undergoing some extra security measures. ICJ, International Court of Justice, is to consider legality of Israeli control over West Bank and East Jerusalem. UN's top court considering legality of Israel's occupation of West Bank, Gaza, East Jerusalem. Let's move on. It was a long video. It might take a few hours to post this. I know you're waiting. I'm actually recording it today on Tuesday, the 20th. I attempted it yesterday and there was error, so I had to redo it today. But this time is better, praise the Lord. Hostile foreign Islamists. I want you to know, this is generally the case. Generally. It's just that they don't show you that side of them until the mask drops. Many of them have dropped their masks already. So we know them, we can identify them, okay? Think of it as a military tactic, okay? Military, because Islam is military. Hostile foreign Islamists infiltrating East Jerusalem, because that's where they're going to begin the invasion. Increasing extremism. What a surprise. Never saw that coming. Wisely implemented action on local and national levels will significantly mitigate the damage from extreme elements and will encourage participation of leaders and community cooperation. Oh, surprise, surprise, Turkey and Iran. 
If they couldn't agree on anything else, they will on Israel. And we know it's going to happen. The Bible told us. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, chapter 39, clearly, explicitly shows us the unity between the Turks and the Persians is coming. The Gog and Magog alliance. I've done several videos on that already. Check my playlist. The ongoing war in Gaza and Lebanon, initiated by Hamas and Hezbollah, and instigated by Iran, is centre stage in our national strategic consciousness. However, I believe Turkey's got a hand to play in it too. Because remember, 2023 was there celebrating the centenary. So this year is very crucial for Turkey. It's centre stage in our national strategic consciousness. However, we cannot neglect malicious activity within our capital city of Jerusalem, which if not addressed, and this goes for the West too, you can't neglect malicious activity of these Muslim Brotherhood activists in the White House. That's what they are. You can't ignore it, neglect it, turn a blind eye. Which, if not addressed, will impact peace-loving Jews, Muslims, Christians and others. Two of the main players in this ongoing problem are Qatar and Turkey, whose anti-Israel stances are well known. And what does that tell you? Muslim Brotherhood. I'm not paranoid talking about Muslim Brotherhood. There's a reason to that madness. <coughs> Muslim Brotherhood Hamas. Supporters, advocates, give them safe passage, sanctuary, Turkey and Qatar. And it on. The Jerusalem Centre for Applied Policy is currently investigating Qatari Turkish activities in Jerusalem elsewhere. They can do it all they want, but it's coming. At least two other Turkish bodies, the Turkish Culture Association, Amiratana, directed by senior Hamas figure, are also supporters of the resistance against Israel. These are essentially fronts for Hamas activities in Jerusalem. They're going to invade. I'm telling you now, before anyone else is going to tell you, they're going to take it by force because nobody cares now in Israel about the two-state solution, which is going to anger, like they're not angry already, further infuriate the Islamic world. Well, if Israel's not going to come to the table to negotiate a two-state solution, because they never did anyway, but they're going to say, oh, Israel's just not willing to be a partner in peace, like they've ever been a partner in peace, ever. These people are nothing but a bunch of Pharisees, hypocr hypocrites, self-righteous bunch, projectors, narcs. They're going to take it by force. They're going to build their military strength from the north. There are many nations north of Israel who would love to do that. I'm going to turn you to the scripture. Zechariah 14. Let us read what the two prophets in the book of Zechariah, and I believe the other one that I have is the book of Joel. This is not even in the New Testament. We're talking about even older than the New Testament. These days were prophesied accurately. Aren't we glad that the word of God told us what was going to happen? Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. So God, knowing what's going on, he knows everything. Nothing takes him by surprise. He's watching them going, huh, interesting. Hmm. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. I don't believe this is the whole world. I believe this is all the surrounding nations. The ones who want it. Who wants Jerusalem, friends? Who wants Jerusalem? The answer is telling you who the beast system is and the harlot. It's all about Jerusalem. The harlot is going to seduce Israel. False sense of brotherhood, alliance, Abraham Accords, Saudi Arabia. 
while the Antichrist, the hostile enemy, is coming directly from the north. They're already preparing, they're getting their stuff together in Jerusalem. The article from the JP Post just mentioned. The Lord has a plan, you see. I will gather the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. Half of the city shall go into captivity. Basically, you're October the 7th on a grand scale. And the world is pushing Israel for a two-state solution when we know exactly it's going to be worse than what they did on October the 7th. And they want Israel to bend the knee to come to this table. No way! Half of the city shall go into captivity. It's exactly what they did. You see this? This is what they did in those kibbutz. You see this? Who's the Lord talking about? Is he talking about the Pope? Is he talking about Donald Trump's army? Is he talking about the army of King Charles? Come on, what is with this nonsense? But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Always remember, when it looks like it's over, it's not over. It's going to be that bad. Only a remnant are going to be spared. This is why I'm I'm in a continual state of grief, friends. I don't know how to explain it to you other than that. I'm in a continual state of grief. I'm not saying I'm a prophet of God. I'm not saying that I have a mantle of a prophetess. But I think I've got a little, 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 little taste of how the prophets felt. When, when they were preaching, and most of it was warning was to come and they were grieved they were burdened weeping jeremiah it doesn't feel good to carry this burden but it's my burden i pick up my cross i know you've got a cross to pick up too just pick it up friends pick up take up your cross So when I go silent for a while, you just need to bear with me. I have to go through things. I, I need to hear from the Lord. I'm not like a lot of these other YouTubers who just keep putting out content for the sake of putting out content. To keep feeding the people, give them something. Go, go, go. I need to be quiet. I need to hear from the Lord. I need to process stuff. And then on top of that, I've got my family to deal with. Backstabbers. Then the Lord will go forth. That's the order. He's going to gather the nations. Battle against Jerusalem. We know who the nations are. We don't have to be so precise right now. We know that the Islamic world, okay. They're going to do what Hamas did. Exactly the same thing. But it's going to be against Jerusalem. A remnant are going to be spared. Then the Lord will go forth. And fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, he's literally going to be in the land. Take that Mahadi and Isa. They're thinking Jesus, our Jesus, is Dajjal. They're using sophistry. Remember the term sophistry? They use sophistry. To tell you, oh, Dajjal is just the enemy of Muslims and we have Mahdi Nisa, they're going to protect us from the deception of the Dajjal. When really, they know, it's Jesus. This is why they're attacking Jesus. Jesus is a Muslim, all that nonsense. They want you to accept the counterfeit and reject the authentic Jesus. Don't do it. Don't take the mark of the beast. Do not submit. Do not surrender. And in that day, that glorious day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. He's going to make it obvious, you guys, because this is where the action's going to be. 
the battle is going to be against Jerusalem. We read from the article. It's East Jerusalem, right, that they want, okay? You following with me? So it's no surprise why the Lord comes, lands on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. He's going to face his enemies dead straight head on. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. You know that saying when someone comes to save the day? This is Jesus coming to save the day, to save his people, to save the world. From east to west, making a very large valley, half of the mountain shall move. It's a massive earthquake. The destruction will be such, it's all going to be divided. It shall come to pass in that day. Thus is the Lord my God and all the saints with you. That could be read the angels, it could be the saints. The holy ones, it could be the angels to be honest. We don't need to go into diving into that term right now. But I, from reading what's going on here, I believe it's the angels, the holy ones. Because they're preparing to come with Jesus to fight. It shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. At evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in that day it shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem. It's going to be redeemed, restored. Half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. In both summer and winter it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. A Jewish king will be ruling and reigning in all the earth. The Lion of the tribe of Judah is his title. It's mentioned in the book of Revelation. That's telling me he's always a Jew. Eternally a Jew. Because he identifies with the tribe of Judah. End of story. You can argue, but don't do it on my channel. In that day it shall be the Lord is one and his name one. Which we know is the Shema. The Shema Israel. The Lord our God is one. And God is going to destroy the people who came against his people. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Who are the people who will fight against Jerusalem? Those people identified are the Islamic world and it's those people who Jesus is going to fight against. Does that make it clear? Yes, you see the seriousness of this, where he's going. So let them continue in their hatred, in their anti-Israel, anti-Jewish, anti-Christian, because they want us to believe that they get along with Christians. So why are Christians being persecuted, genocided against in Islamic countries? He's going to strike the people who fought against Jerusalem. And it's going to be worse than a nuclear atomic bomb. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. The eye shall dissolve in their sockets and the tongue shall dissolve in their mouth. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbour and raise his hand against the neighbour's hand. They're going to wonder, hold on, was the Mahdi and Isa supposed to defeat Dajjal? What is going on? This guy is super powerful. He's wiping us out. A great panic from the Lord will be among them. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, just like in Egypt, when the children of Egypt left Egypt, they gathered the wealth of the Egyptians. They didn't leave empty handed. So you can see the relevance of what happened in Exodus. There are similar themes that are going to repeat. Such also shall be the plague. It's going to destroy everything. The nations worship the king. And this Jewish king is going to be worshipped during a Jewish feast of tabernacles. You can read it all. This is how the Lord is going to redeem 
the land, restore it, full restoration, cleansing, redemption of his people, the remnant, and he's going to rule and reign in Jerusalem. That is where they're going to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And it should come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. We should get practicing now. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, if you Muslim people don't come to worship Jesus, the Jew, the Jewish king in Israel, the Lord of hosts on them, there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. There's going to be famine in the land. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not come to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Joel 3 says more or less the same thing. But here the Lord is very, very... Um, he's very... Uh, what's the word? Very zealous for his righteousness. God judges the nations... Not all the world at the moment. He's talking about the nations that come against his people. Okay. When God is specific, we need to be specific. Okay. For behold, in those days and at that time. Well, should we go back a chapter? Let's go. Joel, I mean, Joel 3. It's only three chapters in this book. The day of the Lord, Joel 2. Okay. So in Joel 2, the Lord is preparing the people. To repent because his day is coming. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Let the priests minister to the Lord. We between the porch and the altar. Let them say spare your people O Lord. This has been my prayer for the longest time. It's a simple prayer. It's an effective prayer. If you don't have the words to pray because of the grief. Because the shock and horror of what just took place. Just pray. Spare your people, O Lord. Do not give your heritage to reproach. That the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? The Lord is going to, at this time that's coming. He's going to work in his people. I'm talking about Israel. The people. There's the church. And then there's Israel. They're not one and the same thing. He's going to begin to work in them. He's already begun working in them. Don't forget the early Christians were Jews. And then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. I'm glad I went back a chapter in Joel 2. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain, new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. And what else does he say? But I will remove far from you the northern army. When does the Antichrist, where does he come from? The north. The Assyrian, the enemy. Gog, Magog, all from the north. God promises his people he's going to remove this northern army and he will drive him away into a barren and desolate land with his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea. His stench will come up and his foul odor will rise because he has done monstrous things. Things He's going to be slayed. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord has done marvellous things. So the beastly creature has done monstrous things, but the Lord has done marvellous things. Marvellous. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain, the latter rain. And he's going to restore everything that the locusts have stolen. <clears throat> you shall eat plenty, and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. 
Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. This is Jesus. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall be never, my people shall never be put to shame. And then he pours out his spirit. I told you the Lord is going to begin to prepare his people and the Holy Spirit is going to be given with power. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Hallelujah. And then we read God's dealings with his enemies. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, obviously the serpent doesn't want this to happen, but it's going to happen. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people. The severity of God's judgments are with those people who persecuted his people. On account of my people, my heritage as well. Be careful what you say. Be careful with your attitude. What you think and what you say might be right. But the Lord is watching. He's watching your attitude. He's watching your heart. Whom they have scattered among the nations. They've divided up my land. He's so angry that they messed around with his land. They have cast lots for my people. have given a boy as a payment for a harlot. And then God says. What have you to do with me? Lebanon region Gaza region Hamas region Hezbollah region indeed what have you to do with me O Tyre and Sidon and all the coast of Philistia will you retaliate against me but if you retaliate against me speedily and swiftly I will return your retaliation upon your own heads God is gonna answer them according to their wicked ways Philistia, coast of Philistia, we obviously know this is all where the Palestinian Gazans live. The coasts of Philistia, Tyre and Sidon, Lebanon country, okay? And it comes down to, again, not a coincidence, is it? Is it a coincidence that all these in green are surrounding Israel? Think, please. Use your spiritual discernment. Now is the time now. Your people get all fancy with that word. Oh, discernment. No, well, now's the time, isn't it? Discern. Not a coincidence, is it? The green Islamic world want to take that, swallow up Israel, and set up their own false prophet and false Messiah, the Antichrist and the false prophet in Jerusalem. Why is it so important to them? Because of what I just read to you from the prophets, what they said. Not a coincidence. Apparently this small country is the biggest problem for Muslim nations around the world. Not a coincidence, friends. Islamic artwork. Is there anything of beauty that the Palestinians can contribute to society and to the world in general? Anything of beauty? Anything of profound significance? Anything of value? Of noble, of noble quality? Anything of real value? Apart from this junk. This is portraying that Islamic scripture. Oh Muslim, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. Very good article. I got that image from this article. But it's so long. I'll read some of it, seeing as I had it up. How are we doing? There is currently much discussion of the murderous methods used by Hamas in its October 7th attack on localities in southern Israel, methods that resemble those of the Islamic State, ISIS. 
organization in their cruelty and brutality because it's Islamic. Don't take a rocket science to figure that out. And we don't have to write elaborate articles to conclude. There's an eerie similarity between the atrocities that Hamas committed and the Gazan residents and what ISIS did. The common denominator is Islam staring you in the face. Islam is that elephant in the room. I'll do a separate video on just this article because I want to break it down some more. So when the Jewish Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords returns, he's going to deal with his enemies. We're not preaching this. No one's talking about it. Hello. I'm not seeking an echo chamber. I'm seeking those who would preach the word of God in its entirety. Give the full gospel message. What does he do? Let's go there. Revelation. Nineteen, I think it is. Nineteen. So the Lord Jesus, when heaven is opened, behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. There's only one Jesus. The authentic Jesus who is faithful and true. You can keep your Islamic, weak, perverted, wicked imitation to yourself. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. The Word of God is what these people are attacking. They've been attacking it relentlessly from the advent of Muhammad, the madman, the prophet of wickedness, the prophet of doom, from that time. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen. This is why I say the saints that mentioned in Joel that follow the Lord has to be the armies in heaven. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp word. Imagine the Muslim world when they see this spectacle. Oh my goodness. Is that the Dajjal? Oh my goodness. You never told us it was going to be like this, Mahdi. Where is Isa? How are we going to fight this? Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that we do, he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. Are you telling me this Jew is going to rule the world? Yeah. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. He's a king. He's a lord. He's not just a mere king or a simple lord. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he has many crowns. I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Yes, that great God is Jesus, that you may eat the flesh of the kings of all these people that he's going to slay. And this is what the Lord does. Take note, Muslim world. Do you know that this is the Bible I'm reading you from? A very ancient work of antiquity, if you want to say it that way. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, ancient writings, Holy Bible. These are holy words. And I saw the beast. You see, Satan is a bad loser. He's a sore loser. He knew his end is coming. But he, he didn't want to go down without a fight, obviously, right? He didn't just wave up the white flag and just say, I surrender, okay, Jesus, all right. He wanted to go down in a bad way and take millions of souls with him to hell. But God so loved the world that he gave his one and only beloved son, Jesus Christ, for the whole world. 
And all we have to do is just believe on him. Turn away from our sins and believe in Jesus as the only redeemer, the only saviour, the only saviour of the day for mankind. He made it simple, so there's no excuse, right? You don't have to bring anything apart from yourself. There's no works of righteousness that you can do that merit any favour with the Lord God, who is the Holy One of Israel. This is what's going to become. And if it's true, if it is the Mahdi, and if it is Isa, and it turns out, oh my goodness, it is the Islamic end times that ended up being the very Antichrist that the Bible warned about. And if it is true, this is what Jesus is going to do to the Mahdi and Isa. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, remember the ten kings that joined them, and their armies gathered together to make war against him, who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, that would be the Mahdi, I guess, and with him the false prophet, that would be Esau, I guess, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those Don't be deceived by this Islamic narrative, friends. I'm warning you. Who deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. The rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Yeah, Jesus is going to do that. I'll be back again as soon as I can, friends. I want to continue with what I've got here. So hopefully you see the bigger picture. We know what we're dealing with now. Not just protesters. These are activists for the Antichrist. Okay? They're activists for the agenda of the beast. And they don't even know it. They don't know it. Pray for their souls. Remember the story of Khalil? His testimony? Nothing is impossible without God. Nothing. As long as the heart is contrite and seeking God. Nothing is impossible. In fact, there are testimonies of Muslims who weren't even seeking God. And they found Jesus. Or Jesus found them. <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom. Let's pray for the arrival of the two witnesses. In response in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I'll see you again soon, friends. Love you. Share this, please.